Hey, this is Jim Hershauer, and I've got Prashant here with me. Prashant's one of the co-founders of DevTron, and I wanted to ask Prashant a question today. Now, I'm going to set this up a little bit at first with just a quick little statement that one of the major problems that we see with companies, they repeat the same mistake over and over again, is giving out too many Kubernetes permissions right from the start of a project. And what ultimately ends up happening is this causes major issues over the long run. So Prashant, can you tell me a little bit more about this problem and how does DevTron really help you prevent it right from the start? Sure, Jim. That's a great question. And we have seen this happening again and again. One of the reasons we'll find is when we go to the root, right? Why Kubernetes came into existence, the idea was to say that <clears throat> how can we give more capabilities to the developers so that they can do things. And people took it literally, right? So they said, let's give everything back to the developers and let them do everything. But if you listen to a lot of luminaries in the field, you will see that they are still saying that, oh, Kubernetes is still, it has given some level of abstraction, but it's still not there where developers would like to learn everything. It becomes another technology which they have to learn, right? So they are still not domain experts and Kubernetes still is exposing a lot of complexities to them, right? But the companies who are adopting Kubernetes are looking at, at, at it and saying, oh, great, let's give access to developers so that they can do things and they would understand so they would be taking the right pause, but doesn't turn out that way, right? And then the struggle starts happening because developers make some changes, things may break, nobody knows what kind of changes has happened, and it becomes like a huge task to figure out what has happened, why it has happened, and how to revert it back. And then the second step that the companies start taking is, oh, let's stop their access, right? Because if you look at Kubernetes, Kubernetes is RBAC mechanism, but RBAC is not a very fine-grained access control mechanism. It's at a very broad level, right? So just to give an example, if you are saying that I own an application called a payment application, and you won't need to have access to only payment ports, it's not possible today, right? Because every time a new port gets created, it has a new name, and you can't give me access. Either you are giving me access to all the ports in the same namespace, or I don't have access, right? So essentially, Kubernetes is not good at very fine-grained access controls. And that's where the problem starts happening. So you start with giving all the access, and then you quickly figure out it's not going to work. And then you start with drawing all the access, right? The right answer is somewhere in between, because there are certain infrastructural pieces which developers don't understand, and they are not supposed to understand also, right? So for example, setting up ingress. Why should I care as a developer about ingress? Only thing I care about is this is a URL where I'll be able to access my application, period. Or if I want to talk to some other application, what is the URL where it should be accessible? But there are certain things which I care about. For example, which is the port where application is running? I may want to change that. What is the liveness well, readiness URL? What is the config map? How it is being mounted? If I want to change some uh, configurations in the config map, should I go to the DevOps guys to have them make these changes? Right. So the right answer is somewhere in between. And that's where the DevTron comes into picture. DevTron says that Kubernetes model of access control is not fine-grained enough to sort of have a better collaboration between developer and DevOps. It's, it's not a white box versus a black box thing, right? So the answer is gray in between as is with everything in life. And that's where DevTron says that, can I tell developers that this is something that you can modify and this is something you cannot modify? So for example, if you are a junior developer, you can modify image because you want a new code to be deployed or you can in a modify config map, but you cannot touch anything else because you are not senior enough, mature enough to know things. Whereas a person who is senior, maybe a QA guy in a QA environment who has to generate different scenarios, different issues, maybe have to run even stress tests. So they may even be okay with increasing RAM and CPU, but the junior developer is not, right? So this is the right way to think about it where the access control is not being thought in terms of the models which have been imposed by Kubernetes, but by saying that, okay, what are the capabilities which developers or QA are comfortable with and would like to own and control vis-a-vis -vis the infrastructure capabilities and specs which DevOps team would like to control. And that's exactly where DevTron gives you a better model to control those things with a high level as well as a low level thinking to control things better. All right. Well, there you have it. If you're starting to use Kubernetes, if you're thinking about using it, if you're already down the road a little bit and you've already started to give out too much access, you might want to rethink that. So DevTron can implement a fine-grained role-based access control model overlaid with Kubernetes 
and can prevent some very significant issues from happening down the road.